Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Now check it out. I got you, we got you. Matthew 11, 21. Matthew 11, 24. 11 and 12. So now, we're dealing with the kingdom of heaven, right? Because I'm pretty sure you want the kingdom of heaven. You want the kingdom of heaven, right? Sister, what about you? What's your name? Latina. Latina. Okay, now watch this. Let's, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go into equality a little bit. Because the kingdom of heaven and equality is connected. Watch this. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. Uh, right and from the days of John the Baptist until now. Until the days of John the Baptist until now. Dealing with the Israelites and the status of the Israelites through civilization, through time. The kingdom of heaven. It says the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Suffered violence. Say the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. That's confusing, ain't it? What do you mean by that? How is the kingdom of heaven suffering violence? Is that the kingdom? When I read the scripture, I said, man, what, what the hell is that talking about? Read it again. Read it again. It's Matthew 11 and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. So the kingdom of heaven today and in the situation today is suffering violence. Now, what is the kingdom of heaven? That's what you got to ask yourself. Watch this. Here's the indication. Give me Acts 1, verse 6. Because a lot of times today, right, we want equality, right? But God said there's a kingdom, though. And in, those, and in that kingdom, there's no equality. You understand? Watch this. Acts 1, verse 6. What is the kingdom of heaven that's suffering violence? Watch this. Acts chapter... Reach them. Chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh -huh. When they therefore would come together. When they therefore was come together. Go ahead. They asked of him. They saying, asked of who? Christ. Watch this. Go ahead. Saying, Lord. Uh -huh. Wilt thou at this time. Wilt thou at this time, Lord. Restore it again. what? Restore. It says restore. Now in order to restore something, you must have had it. Like that, like that chain you got on. I take that from you. And then I give it right back what I'm doing. I'm restoring it to you. Read it again. When they therefore. Will come together. When they will therefore come together, what is the question that they was asking Christ? That we all should be asking Christ. Go ahead. They asked of him saying, Go ahead. Lord, will thou at this time restore again? Restore again what? The kingdom to Israel. You hear that? They said, okay, Lord, when are you gonna restore the kingdom back to us? Now, who did the kingdom belong to at this time? Who was ruling? Check. The Romans. What race are they? Two. White people. Now, today, 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 right? Now, who's ruling today? White people. Now, what is the kingdom that suffered violence? The Israelites. That's right. That is the kingdom of heaven. Read it again. Go back to Matthews real quick. Matthews real quick. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. The black men in America, the Hispanic men in America, the Israelites, if that's who they are, it says they suffered violence. Go ahead. Suffering violence uh -huh. and the violence taken by force. So if we're the kingdom of heaven, who is the violence suffering? Who is causing that violence? And says, and the violent take it by force. Who is that dealing with? The people who put you in slavery. Right, that's right. The people who did come look at this sign real quick. Come look at this sign real quick. Because one thing we don't understand is that we gotta realize, listen, we have a kingdom. We are a kingdom. And and our kingdom is a little bit different from them because we the kingdom of God. Right, that's right. You understand? Give me 1 Chronicles 28, verse 5. Teach up! 1 Chronicles 28, verse 5. So look, what that does, that just squashes equality. Just step on it. Because there's no equality in ruling. There's no equality in the kingdom. Yeah. And it's them ain't going to be no equality in God's kingdom. That's right. You understand? Watch this. 1 Chronicles 28, verse 5. Bring it out. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 5. Uh -huh. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons. Uh -huh. He hath chosen Solomon, my son, 
to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord. So this is King Solomon, who's a black man. It says he have chose Solomon to sit on the throne of the what? Of the kingdom of the Lord. It said of the kingdom of God. Now, who is this kingdom of the Lord? Watch this. Over Israel. You hear that? He said that you guys are the kingdom of the Lord. The Israelites ruling in the earth is the kingdom of God. That's Why? Because right. we are the children of God. Right. So that just squashes equality. You understand? There's no equality when it comes to God. You understand? And it has never been equality through history of civilization. What time you could tell me that there was equality, but there wasn't a ruling class and a serving class. It He's never right. happened. What do we get this from? We get this from the TV. We get this from the radios. They, we get this from the speech of the enemy. They tell us all this, all that. But listen, when you look around civilization, whether economically, uh, physically, the fools and all the things that we eat, we are not equal to them. You understand? Right. Hey, brother, brother, you paying attention to this? Because listen, listen, this is the solutions. The solution, what we're reading right now. But our people really don't want the solution. They want an easy way out. Right. We want to continue in the same situation that got us here, which is sin. You understand? So now you gotta ask yourself, okay, okay, now you take upon the mind of a ruling class, a ruling mind. They don't want us to be leaders. They don't want us to be rulers. They want us to sit here, work for them, and continue being dumb, docile slaves. All right. But that's not what God is talking about. Give me Daniel 2, verse 44. We dealing with the kingdom of heaven. And once you understand the kingdom of heaven, okay, then you won't be saying, okay, well, this Bible is a white man's book. Because you will hear brothers say that. That's the white man's book. But when you open up the book and read it, God is black, Jesus is black, the Jews are black. It's, it's preaching about your, your salvation and their destruction. Now, if a, if a white man wrote that Bible, I don't know why he wrote that for. Watch this, Daniel 2 verse 44. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. Uh -huh. And in the days of these kings uh -huh. shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. So this is what Christ coming. He's here to come up, set up a kingdom, which is your kingdom, and your kingdom will never be destroyed. Meaning what? It's not going to be destroyed like the Romans. It's not going to be destroyed like America when Christ comes. All the different kingdoms have always been destroyed. But once Christ comes and set up your kingdom, guess what? It will never be destroyed. That's right. Go ahead. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. And it says, in your kingdom, it will not be left to other people to make the decisions and rule. Just like it's in any other kingdom. Do we make the decisions? But we feel we can make those decisions. We'll, we'll vote. We'll go out and vote. We'll sign a petition. We'll march. But we don't make no decision. That's not how kingdoms work. And it's going to be the same way in our kingdom. It's just going to be done in righteousness. Read it again. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Read. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. We're not going to be holding hand with them trying to make sure they, it's not going to be like, it's going to be left up to us to make the decisions. We're going to have the power. Go ahead. But it shall break in pieces. It shall what? Break in pieces. The kingdom, your kingdom is going to break in pieces. Go ahead. And consume all of these kingdoms. It's going to consume these kingdoms. You understand? Because you know, only way you can only way you can get salvation, guess what? It gotta be war. Right now, it's a spiritual war right now. We're battling with that because that's the power that we give it. And give me uh first Corinthians 10 real quick. So now, brother, you got questions, ask them. You believe in God? Uh yeah. You believe in God. So you follow Christianity? Yeah. Give me one thing that you learn in Christianity that benefits your life. Uh, well, I can say it now. Think about it. Listen, listen, listen. You got to understand what was the form, what was the device they used to destroy our people? Religion. Because the word religion is in the Bible, but that's not our religion. Our religion are the laws of God. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Those are the same laws that they, they defied and killed and murdered us, right? So now, you gotta understand this, okay, you gotta realize, okay, you know what? Everything is a lie, it's a lie they told us. Because when you read the Bible and open it up, guess what, that's not what it says. Now, you a Christian, what it means to be a Christian, you should be a follower of Christ. Do you follow Christ? Yes. Now, how do you follow Christ? Uh, you believe. You believe. So now watch this, watch this. Give me uh, 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. So now, uh, I pose a question like, say for instance, if I told you it was a million dollars and that shopping bag's right there, 
And if you believe it, you will go over there, right? If I show you it's a million dollars in that trash can right there, if you believe me, you will go over there and get it, right? That's action, right? Belief and action, they go hand in hand. That's you understand? Right. Now watch this. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved. Everyone that shall be saved from what we're going through right now and for the wars to come, read. And shall be able to escape by his works. Said you're going to be able to escape by your works, meaning what? Keeping God's commandments, which we don't do. Go ahead. And by faith. And by what? And by faith. So it says, by faith of Christ and keeping God's commandments, his laws, read. Whereby ye have believed. So that's how you show you believe. You got to have work and faith, and that shows that you believe in God. That's that you see, Listen, listen. The same brother, I had a brother, he committed murder. My uncle committed murder. He said he believed in God, but how he murdering everybody? How is you believe in God? That's a street with Christianity. Listen, Christianity, they did this. The Christians came over. They put them in strike. These are the uh, Islam. These are the Muslims. Give me this. Look at this. This is our northern kingdom brothers. Christians did this. Now, was they was they Christian by works? No. Was they Christian by faith? No, they wasn't. They said that. They're not Christian. You understand? We come to teach our people the truth. You are what you do. That's if you are a murderer, guess what you are? A murderer. If you are a liar, you a liar. You understand? And the Bible, it brings it out. It brings it out. It tells you what you are. It tells the truth. It brings everything back to your remembrance. So now watch this. I'm going to give you one law. Give me uh, 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 Leviticus tattoos. Now you got a lot of tattoos, right? So now you will see pastors with tattoos. Is that of God? Or is it not of God? Matter of fact, so let's rock 19, 29 first. Now watch this. Now watch this. Now dealing with sisters... Dealing with sisters, just by looking at a sister's appearance, you can tell if she if she gonna get down, if she gonna have sex, if she's promiscuous. Just by looking at them, right? A lot of brothers got that intuition by how they dress or how you carry yourself. God, He gives us a way on how to carry ourselves. That's right. Watch this. So, Rock 19, verse 29. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Uh -huh. A man may be known by his look. So a man of God, he may be known by his look. And a man in general, he may be known by his looks. You can tell a man of God by how he looks. Why? Because God gave us things that we're supposed to dress. How we're supposed to conduct ourselves. How we're supposed to take care of our body. You can tell a man. You can tell a man if he broke. Most sisters, they'll know a man if he broke from a mile away. They won't even. They, in Chicago, they look down. And sometimes they won't make it up if everything ain't right. And they gone. They, they, they gone. Read it again. A man may be known by his look. So I can tell if you're a man of God by how you look, how you carry yourself, by your body. Now watch this. A man of God, he knows this. Give me Leviticus. Go ahead. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 27. Uh -huh. Verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Yeah, that, those are your tattoos, the dead. R.I.P. Mama. You don't supposed to do that. You don't supposed to do that. Go ahead. Nor print any marks upon you. Now you did that, right? I did that. We all did that, right? We didn't know. We go by what the world says by Christians. Christians get that done, right? But God says no. Now who should we go by? What God says? Or what the pastors or what uh, popular persuasion say, what everybody else say. What God. Now, we do that. Guess what that makes us? A Christian, a follower of Christ. A true. Not just in faith or what they say with mouth talk, but with works. You understand? And so now the Bible, once you keep reading the Bible, you're going to see, you know what? I'm not really a follower of Christ. You understand that, bro? You understand that? Who want to come up? Who want to come up? You got questions? You want, hey, you want to ask questions Because listen, when you go to church, you go to church That's good That's good you don't go to church So you know what, tattoos, you can't do that, right So now, let's deal with smoking weed You smoke weed you sm And you're a Christian, right Now I want to ask you just for what you believe You believe that God ordains you can smoke weed Huh Okay, so now What happens if you ingest too much smoke in general, is smoke good or bad for you? It's bad for, it's bad for you, right? And when you smoke it up, right, that smoke is going into you, right? Is that bad for you? That's bad for you, right? So now watch this. Give me First Corinthians three. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter three and verse sixteen. Uh huh. Know ye not that?
that ye are the temple of God. He says, your body is the temple of God. Why? Because you're the kingdom of heaven. You're the Israelites. Your body is the temple of God. Go ahead. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. So the spirit of God don't dwell in all races. It dwells in the Israelites. That's Black right. men, Hispanic right. men. That's how important we are. That's what separates us from all nations. Go ahead. If any man defile the temple of God, he said, you know what? I'm going to take God's plant and I'm going to flame it up and I'm going to ingest that smoke. I'm going to defile my temple. Go ahead. Him shall God destroy. Evidently, you weren't a Christian because now you're damn dead. You catch cancer. Why? Because you got destroyed. Because you really wasn't a Christian. You really wasn't a follower of Christ. Guess what? You destroyed your body. And guess what? That's just another weapon that the white man used against us. Right. Listen, in time, they're never going to give us anything that's going to benefit us. Right. So listen, right. if your enemy come and give you something, you might want to question it just by what history says. Now, give me Sirach 12. Never trust your enemy. Now, and how's we going to destroy us? Guess what? Can you operate high as hell? Bring it up. You A lot of brothers got killed just from being high and not knowing where the hell they at. That's you understand? Right. Our people, we got traps in the world today. We got traps. White woman a trap, school a trap, job a trap, TV a trap. Everything is traps around here for us. We got to be sober minded. Give me up first Peter's two thirds. We got to be sober minded. You understand? Everybody out here ain't got the traps like that, what we got to go through. You That's understand? Right. They're not dealing with what we have to deal with. We, our minds, it got to be clear. Got to be clear. We got to be on point. We got to be keeping God's commandments and looking for the salvation of Christ. That's what we got to be doing. So now watch this. First Peter 2.13. Be sober. First Peter 2.13. Yeah. Yeah. Be sober. Be vigilant. So now. Vigilant. It says what? Be sober. It says be sober. Be vigilant. It says be sober. Be vigilant. Why? It's traps out here. People want to kill us. People want to stop the kingdom of heaven from coming to us. Nobody want to see the black woman rule. They want to see the black woman get shot down. They want to see the black woman get killed. They want to see the black woman slave. They don't want us to see us in power. Right. They don't want to see that. So we got to be sober. We got to be vigilant. Go ahead. Because your adversary, the devil. The, the adversary, the devil is what? As a roaring lion. Like a roaring lion. They want to kill us. They set up these traps. Go ahead. Walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Who can I desire? Okay, this nigga gonna fall for the tree. He a dumb nigga. Let's set this up here. You understand? Let's set this up here so he can fall for that. Yeah, let's set up the three strike. He can fall for that. Bring it up. Let's put the weed. Let's put the crack in the neighborhood. They'll see who gonna fall for that. That's right. Because listen, they not forcing us to do it. They just put it in our community. Let's put a liquor store on every corner. That's right. Let's, let's see how many we gonna get with that. You understand? He's not gonna give us nothing. They gonna help us. You understand? And the Bible, listen, the Bible is the weapon against those tricks. Does it get, read it again, read it again. First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Be sober. Be what? Be sober. Black man, put the weed down. That's put right. it down. It is set up for your destruction. Go ahead. Be vigilant. You gotta be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil. The same people who put you on slavery, they're your adversary. The Bible calls them the devil. Go ahead. As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. No mercy is showed unto us at all. You understand? It's real out here. It's real out here for us. But the Lord, give me the dwell in the most high protection. But the Lord, some, but the Bible, God gives us a way out of it. He gives us protection. But guess what? We ain't sit up here and worried about getting shot by the police. We ain't sit here and worry about uh, the drugs or we overdosing up because we right. listen. We avoid those things by listening to God's commandments. That, that, but the brothers right. who are in that wicked life or continue in that wicked life, they have to worry about getting killed. They have to worry about getting shot in the head. And we not in those situations to get. You understand? Go ahead. Ecclesiasticus chapter 34 and verse 16. For the eyes of the Lord are upon them that love him. He says, the eyes of the Lord are upon them that love them. And when he got his eyes on, on you, guess what he's doing? Protect you. But it says the eyes of the Lord on every man that what? On every man, excuse me, the eyes of the Lord are upon them that love him. That keep his commandments because that's what love is. That's how you show your love for God by keeping his commandments. That's right. He is their mighty protection. He says what? He is their mighty protection. Now, did it say that the white man's our protection? Or did it say the Lord is our protection? Bring it out. But you see who we want protecting us? That's the white right. man. That's Makes no right. sense. But the Lord is our protection. 
Go ahead. And strong stay. Uh -huh. A defense from, excuse me, a defense from heat and a cover from the sun at noon. So the Lord is our protection. You understand that? In order to get that protection, we got to do the things that please him. Give me Maccabees. Second Maccabees 4, verse 15. So we are the Israelites. We come out here to teach the Israelites who they are. To teach them the solutions. We looking for they what? Black Lives Matter? That's not a solution. Uh, the Black Panther, that wasn't a solution. Guess what? The Bible and keeping God's commandments, that's the solution. How you doing, young brother? How you doing? What's your name? Huh? Let me take, come up real quick. Come up real quick. I'm going to ask you a question real quick. What does Jesus Christ look like? You know? You say black. Why you say black? Okay, okay, now watch, come here, young man. Come on. We're gonna point out. Point out Jesus Christ here. Who you think is Jesus? Point him out. So the brother said that. What do you say, brother? You point him out now. You point him out. Which one? Jesus is here somewhere, what he looks like, his true depiction. So you just said he was black. Does that man look black? He looks white. Now watch this. Let's read the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says. Revelation. Now let's we're gonna get into the true depiction of Christ, what he looks like. And you're going to tell me, is he a white man? Watch this. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Young brother, what's your name? Now you got to listen. Watch this. Read it again. His head and his hairs. So his hairs on his head were what? White like wool. It says like wool. You know what people have woolly hair today? You know what they compare wool? You ever seen a sheep? You ever seen a sheep? Now, does a sheep have shrinky hair, long hair like this, or does a sheep have hair like ours? Like ours. This is this is talking about Christ, what Christ looks like. That's right. Read it again. His head and his hairs, wool. It says white like wool. Your hair is wool. The only difference is his was white. Watch this. Go ahead. As white as snow. It said it was white as snow. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So now look at the imagery. Now, do you see any hair? Is his hair white like wool? Is it? Now, what person, look at the pictures here. What pictures where his hair is white like wool? This one right here. And that's what the Bible says. That's right. Watch this. Read on. White like wool. Uh -huh. And Excuse me. And white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Then it says, Jesus Christ's eyes, the whites of his eyes, is like a flame of fire. Now you see where our whites at? It's red. Like a flame of fire. Look at the picture. You see any of them with red eyes? What picture here has red eyes? So we got to go by what the Bible says, right? Okay, go ahead. And his feet. Now his feet. Now now he looked at his feet. It's like what? Like unto fine brass. You know what color is brass? What color is brass? Brown. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're a smart brother. Smart brother. It's brown. Now watch this. As if they burned in a furnace. But it was so brown, it looked like he had burned. I Meaning he was very dark, dark, dark brown. So now, what image describes his Christ? Is any man brown, dark, dark brown? Is that image dark, dark brown? Now, what image is dark, dark brown? This right here. Now, which image look more like you? Jesus Christ looks like you. You understand that? Now, now you know you won't be tricked no more. Because a lot of people, they say that that is Jesus. And that's one of the reasons why we have more respect for white people than for ourselves. Because our Savior is white people. They're not our Savior. Their Savior is going to be going to look just like you. Jesus Christ is black. And guess what? If, if he's black, what does Father look like? Bring it out! Huh? Oh. It's black too as well. Give me Daniel. That's right. Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. So now we're going to see what his dad looks like, what his father looks like. Go ahead. No. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. So the thrones was cast down. This is what Jesus is coming. He's coming to save you. Go ahead. And the Ancient of Days did sit. So the Ancient of Days is, is Christ's father. He said he's sitting down. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. He had a garment on like you got clothing on. He has clothing. Go ahead. And the hair of his head. And the hair of his head. What kind of hair does he have? Like the pure wool. His hair is just like Christ. His, That's right. Your hair is just like God. You see that? God looks like who? Us. Go ahead. His throne was like a fiery flame. And his wheels as the burning fire. So you, you understand that? So guess what? 
Christ is black. Jesus is black. God is black. The Israelites are black. The Jews are black. Look at this sign right here, brother. Come here real quick. Come here. What's your nationality? You're a black, right? Okay, so now, is that a nationality or is that a color? That's a color. That's not a nationality. Black people are not a color. We are a race. We, have a we are the Israelites. We are what you call the Jews. That's right. The Jews today, you know what they look like? You ever seen a Jewish person before? Huh? What do they look like? White. White. So now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 14. Bring it out. Let's see the description of, of the real Jews. Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Judah, morning. So the real Jews, they are in mourning. They're in a bad predicament, bad condition. Go ahead. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. Uh -huh. They are black. What color did it say the Jews are? They are what? Black. They are black. So the real Jews, they're in mourning, and they black. Go ahead. Unto the ground. Uh -huh. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. So you know what nationality Jesus was? He was a Jew. It says the Jews are black. So now, if Jesus is a Jew, as he's black, God is black, the Jews are black, how did they become white? Bring it out! Bring it out! How did they become white? Lies. 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 That's how it became lies. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.